Hello et bonjour, Aquaba, and welcome to the Sigma's 2024 Winners Reveal. Uh, my name is Marianne Bouchard, and I will be your host for this live stream. Um, it sounds like a ceremony. It is indeed a celebration um, of the great work we've received uh, in this year's Sigma's competition, but it's really a chill chat about this year's entries. Um, we brought amazing guests for you today, uh, coming from all over the world and uh, representing the best data talents uh, of modern times, just that. Um, they are also a very cool bunch of people, so that makes it super cool to be here with you today. Uh, whether you're watching us uh, live on the Sigma's YouTube channel, hello, or enjoying the replay afterwards, um, do feel free to say hi in the comments. Uh, let us know which country you're watching us from, ask questions, and show your support to winners uh, we'll announce in a moment. Before we do just that, I'd like to welcome on stage, on the virtual stage, um, Gina Shua and Aaron Pilhafa, our co-chairs. Hi guys, how are you doing? Good. Good. Okay, so um, we received 591 entries this year. Uh, 52 of them coming from 22 uh, countries and areas made it to the shortlist. I have some questions for you. Um, without telling us too many details, Aaron, can you tell everyone how many winners we've got this year? Uh, we have 10 winners this year, so very exciting. That's usually what we shoot for. Um, uh, so let's get, so, so 10, 10 this year. Cool. Okay, we'll be seeing these 10 amazing projects um, in a minute. They're all very inspiring, or we do hope that they inspire um, newsrooms and journalists all around. Uh, what advice do you have for data journalists around the world, Gina, um, who will see these projects and will want to level up? Uh, you know, I think that, that the projects have a sort of a, a really broad range from some, some that really took, I think, sort of a huge amount of technical skill and um, and really sort of leveraged, uh, you know, sort of much more cutting edge um, uh, techniques to all the way through to, um, uh, you know, winners that sort of really relied on some really smart um, thinking about stories, thinking about uh, stories that you might not, that, that you might be seeing every day, but that haven't really thought about. And so I think there's a there's a nice range, no matter sort of what kind of newsroom you are, what uh, what level of technical skill you have, and what size you have. I think there's something you can learn from um, from all of the winners uh, this year, and and really kind of think about how their techniques, what they've worked on, can really be applicable to your newsroom. Yeah, absolutely. Well, um, if if you could um, give us some more um, insights um, about this year's winners. Um, what made them stand out? Like, what does it take for a great project um, that made it to the shortlist to then make it as a winner? Okay, well, without giving away details, right? Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I think um, I think they sort of fell into a couple of categories. I think some of them, you know, while they were not necessarily working on things that were happening right away, they were looking more historically. They, you know, I think one of the clear things that that um, that comes to mind when you're looking at um, projects like that is just sort of the public service part of it, the importance of it, and and um, uh, you know the the value to the community of getting that information out. I think that was one. Um, I think that was one sort of clear strain. I mm -hmm. think another one is the importance of the of the organization and the presentation of it. I don't mean making it beautiful, but I mean making it all of that helps. Um, but in terms of sort of how do you tell this story? What, how do you communicate the, the findings that you got? When you, when you do some of these big data projects, you, you find out a ton of things and you have to decide which things really matter to people. And then you have to decide how to tell them to people. And I think we have some projects here where, um, you know, where it's the presentation that really takes a story across the line and makes it very clear to people. And then I think the third one is just the combination of, not just um, lots of different media, uh, in other words, you know, sort of um, data analysis and text and video and photos, which I think is a really important thing in terms of thinking through the entire way of telling the story, but really that, that combination of sort of on the ground shoe leather reporting, 
tied into data, which is sort of a critical aspect. I think sometimes we think about data reporting as, you know, you go crunch a bunch of stuff, you get uh, you get a finding and you know you can write it and then the finding is, um, you know, is, is very rigorous because you have all the data, but then it's what's, what really makes the story whole is getting sort of the people and the real underground understanding into the story. So I think we'll see those across all of the winners. Um, and again, I think those are really good lessons for um, other newsrooms to think about when they do their projects. If I can just, if I can piggyback on that. So one of the things that, one of the reasons why this award, award exists um, and it is always something that the jury considers um, very, very carefully, is that we're awarding the data journalism piece of the award. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you there are often, every single year, there are submissions that are from large news organizations that you've heard of, um, uh, projects that are winning awards that you've heard of, uh, that do not even make it to the finals uh, for us because that, while they're great pieces of investigative reporting that might have a data component, the data isn't central. And that's kind of key for us. Um, there are lots of projects that do make it to the finals where the data piece or the person who's actually responsible for the data piece is the one we're recognizing. And those are people who often don't make it to the top among all the bylines, they sometimes don't even get credit at all. Um, that's what differentiates this award. We're interested in the data journalism, not the journalism that includes data. So I would say that every single winner and all of the shortlisted projects and, and well beyond that uh, fall into that category for us. Awesome, thank you very much. Well, since we talk about the data, uh, <laughs> I'm going to bring our data gatekeeper at the at the Sigmas, and that's um, Kang. Hello, Kang. Hello, Marianne. Thank you so much. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Um, it's getting late here in uh, Malaysia. Yeah, thank you so much. And thank you to everyone joining us from Asia. We know how late it is over there, so apologies for that. Um, okay, so King, I said you, you're the data gatekeeper. Um, can you tell us some stats about this year's um, entries? Like we are in the data community after all, so let's show some numbers. Sure, yeah, sure. Um, so I'm happy to announce that this year um, we have the participations from 322 organizations all over the world from 78 countries slash areas, right? And um, in terms of the breakdown, right, we have since the beginning of Sigma Awards, we have been putting in a lot of efforts to get to encourage um, more participation from, you know, both the global north and the global south. So mm -hmm. I'm happy to um, announce that uh, this year, 35% um, of the entries came from Europe, which is, you know, uh, the biggest region. However, if you look at the other regions, um, Asia, North America, South America, the um, Africa, MENA, and the Oceania, right? Um, they all have equal representation. Um, sorry, not the Oceania, but the other uh, four continents, the Asia, mm -hmm. America, South America, and Africa and MENA. So you can see the uh, percentages range from 14 to 18. So um, um, you can, if you look at, you know, in terms of global North and South, you can see there is um, equal participation from both um, regions. So you can, you can say that. And in terms of a big organization and small organization, we define big organization as organization with 35 full-time journalists and above. So um, we have like 56% of our entries coming from big organization and the rest 44% from small. So you can see it's almost 50-50. Mm -hmm. um, so we're pretty happy about mm -hmm. that. You know, we want to make sure that we have equal representation from different regions, different kind of organizations and teams. And um, out of the 591 entries, um, we selected 52 shortlist entries. And out of these 50, we maintain, you know, more or less maintain the representation from different regions. That's awesome. And um, as you say, it's um, it's really good each year to see that we, we have um, a fair representation of, um, of, of teams um, 
um, no matter what what size they are or, or where they're from. Um, um, that's 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 really cool. And and just to add to that, that that wasn't the case several years ago. Just mm -hmm. just to say, you know, yeah, uh, we we saw a disproportionately large number of entries from large organizations, well resourced organizations, and this award used to be very much dominated by Europe mm -hmm. and North America. And that has changed enormously. And that's very much mm -hmm. to your credit, Kang, and yours, Marianne, for reaching out and trying to bring in um, entries and, and uh, organizations from outside the US and outside the um, North America, and also um, reaching into <clears throat> other parts of the world and trying to encourage small news organizations um, to 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 submit, uh, so I'm really proud of of that. Yay! <laughs> so are we. Well, thank you very much, Aaron and Gina. Um, thanks, Kang. Um, this is it. It's time to to get to, um, to the winners reveal. So, yeah, <laughs> we see you in a bit. I'm gonna bring some more people uh, people on stage right now. See you later. Okay, as I said, it is time for the winners to be revealed. So we have some great guests with us today to help with the task of naming each winner. Um, so I'll get them all on stage now so we can say hi. So from the prize committee, we have um, Mohamed Kamani. Hi there. We have Katya Brambati. We have Ali, Alexis, yeah, and Joshua. Hello, everyone. And from the jury, here we go. We've got Pina, we've got Etha, Jamile, and Gianluca. I'm going to say hi to Roberto. Hi. Hey, everyone. Um, thanks for coming. OK, so can we start? Um, with um, a quick, quick go around uh, this virtual stage, um, so you guys can introduce yourself, just tell us your name, which country you're from, uh, what you do for a living, and whether you're part of the jury or the prize committee. Uh, can we start with um, Mohammed? Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is <coughs> Mohammed Kumani. I'm, uh, I'm from Yemen and based in Berlin. I'm working with uh, Arab reporters for investigative journalism at each. It is uh, the biggest uh, organization for investigative journalism in, in Middle East and North Africa. I'm working with Arij as, as a senior data, uh, editor and coach. And I'm uh, a part of the uh, prize committee. Awesome. Thank you for being here. Um, Katya? Hi. Hello, everyone. Um, I am Katja Bribat, president of uh, the B Association Investigative Journalists. Uh, I am here in Brazil. I'm happy. Hi. Yay. <laughs> We're happy to see you. Um, hello, Pina. Uh, I'm sorry, my internet connection is not so good. It's not so good. I can, I can end. I hope you can hear me. Sorry. Yeah, so I'm Pina. Kennedy's. You're a data journalist and you're based in Turkey. And um, sorry that your connection is not so well. We hope that we get to fix that when it's your turn to, to speak. But uh, it's very nice to have you here too, Pina. Um, Joshua, that's your turn. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Joshua. Um, I'm from Nigeria, the founder of Ghetto Fight. Uh, and I'm part of the prize committee and I'm excited to be here. Yay, we are also. Thank you. Um, Alexei? Hello, everyone. And uh, my name is Alexei. I'm from Estonia. And I'm, um, I'm a data scientist and AI advisor. And I'm part of the prize committee this year. And I'm excited to announce one of the winners. Thank you for being here. Uh, Jamile, do I pronounce your name right? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> okay. Hello everyone. 
Oi in Brazilian, <laughs> in Portuguese Brazilian. Uh, I am a data, a data journalism from Brazil and program manager at School of Data Brazil. I'm really excited to be here with you. Thanks, thanks for being here. Um, and uh, finally, uh, Gianluca, hi. Hi, uh, my name is Gianluca. Um, I'm the Austin editor at CNN. Um, I'm based in London. Also very excited to be here. Okay, thank you very much. All right, let's um, start. Okay, it's time to announce the first winner, guys. Um, there isn't any um, category um, this year. So um, we'll go through the 10 uh, winning entries one by one in no particular order. Um, each speaker will read out the name of the winning entry, the publishing organization, their country, um, and give us a word on, on what um, makes it um, uh, great, what makes it a winning entry. Uh, the credits, including the names of uh, all the team members involved um, in each project, will show at the, at the bottom of the screen. Um, let's get started. And Etha, you are the first one up. Hey. Hi, Marianne. Hello, everyone. I'm Ithar Lawem. Uh, I'm a coach and a data trainer at Arab Reporter for Investigative Journalism, and I'm based in Jordan. Uh, I'm a, a jury member, a jury committee member. So uh, I'm honored, first of all, I'm honored really, Marianne, to be here today. The first investigation in the winner, in the winner list is how China is steering down Islam, published by the Financial Times. This investigation was done by, and pardon me if I didn't pronounce the names correctly, Peter Andrenga, Irena De La Torre Arenas, Max Halu, Sam Joyner, Jo Lehi, Lucy Rogers, Eva Shao, Yang Yang, and San Yu. You know, it's not a secret that the Chinese government detained hundreds of thousands of Muslims in Xinjiang, and there are many reports about this. But in this investigation, the reporters were able to find an innovative way to show a broader suppression of Islamic culture in China. They collected evidence about how thousands of worship places of Muslims in China, which are mosques, were sub subjected to changes that masks the identity of the place by removing the most distinctive architectural elements they, that gives the place the identity, like the minarets, the domes. And this was done under what the governments called the renovation work. It was mm -hmm. obvious that the reporters put a lot of effort to spot the changes over time between 2018 and 2023. They used OSINT techniques, multiple of them. It's really huge data. They built the data set of about 4,500 locations of mosques across China and not only in Xinjiang. And of these, there were 2,300 uh, with an Islamic architecture, uh, architecture and about 74 of them, they have been altered, stripped or even destroyed in these communities. So it was not part, this on the only part, but the reporters, they went further in their analysis and they tried to find evidence using data that shows that these mosques modification were, were mere war systematic way. They were systematic in areas with larger Muslim population. So the more the Muslim population in the area, the more the Islamic architecture that was removed. So that reflects some kind of policy towards this. And this was what the journalists and reporters there tried to do. And this was really, really fantastic work. Thank you very much. Yes, it, uh, indeed. And um, uh, and a great start for this <laughs> for this list of, um, of winners. Uh, thank you very much, Eva. Congratulations then to the team behind um, this project. Um, and um, we're gonna move on to the to the next one. This is it. Who's ready? Ali is ready. Ali is very ready. Hello. Hi. Hello, Alexei. How are you doing? Still good? Ready to name another winner? Ready. Make some more ready people. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, as part of the uh, um, pr uh, prize committee this year, it was uh, somehow challenging to uh, you know decide on which one to win and to select those 10 people. But for the one that I would reveal in a minute, it wasn't so uh, hard because it was really 
uh, easy for everyone to pick this name since the beginning uh, based on the great work that they've done. So that goes for um, the Bloomberg team from the United States of America, credits to Leonardo, Adina, Chloe, and Jillian with the project name Humans Are Biased, Generative AI is even worse. So a little bit about this project. And um, uh, I mean, I'm personally an AI uh, also advisor and I work in LLMs and I've seen a lot of work, but uh, this work is really incredible. And uh, towards also the bias that we always uh, speak about in generative AI and the human bias, this project was a great uh, evidence-based based, uh, you know, uh, work that also took into account uh, uh, trying LLMs uh, by generating 5,000 different images. So the innovativeness of the work that was done behind this project was really great. The interpretation of the uh, result results in a data format was really amazing uh, it has a lot of data-driven journalism components i love this work and so do also the other jury uh, other uh, members of the jury and um and also the 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 whole pro the, the storytelling of the project was really amazing uh, i would say uh, the project in terms of research science and um, evidence base uh, innovation uh, data components data journalism as well as storytelling was really uh, amazing. I'd like to uh, uh, congratulate you guys for that. And I'd love to see more, uh, something like this also in the future. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you a lot, um, Alexei. Uh, and you're right, this was, um, um, again, an, an amazing project and, and a topic that speaks to a lot of us <laughs> uh, in, in the room today, isn't it, Kang? Right. And um, thank you so much, Alexei. So uh, I'm going to take over, uh, take over the baton from uh, Marianne and continue with our program today. Uh, next, uh, we are going to invite Gianluca to announce the next uh, winner. Hi, guys. Um, as some of the previous said, uh, there were some incredible projects this year. Um, and uh, for uh, the next project I'm going to announce, I have to say this is uh, this was one of the best in terms of uh, how to uh, use uh, data to serve public good for the public interest. Um, we're talking about something that uh, is impacting people's lives. Um, and um, without further ado, I'm going to announce the uh, winners. Um, the project is called Inside the Suspicious Machine, published by Lauthaus Reports, Wired, Bers Baton, Open Rotterdam, uh, based in the Netherlands. You can see the credits uh, at the bottom. This is truly a collaborative project uh, between these teams. And um, um, I think it really, it's really testament to the determination of the reporters that they uh, spent uh, uh, almost one year and a half of negotiation uh, with the city of uh, Rotterdam to um, uh, obtain uh, the uh, computer codes used basically to flag uh, Rotterdam re residents uh, for uh, welfare fraud investigations. And um, they, um, they studied and tested the, uh, the machine learning algorithm um, and uh, they, what they learned was that the algorithm not only did marginally better than random chance, um, but it also targeted people based on their native language, gender, and even how they're dressed. Um, and um, basically, the projects uh, followed two archetypes and typified more than 300 characteristics to show audiences the arbitrary and at times prejudiced logic of the system. Um, as I said, this uh, is uh, data used for uh, the public service. Uh, we're talking about uh, uh, algorithms that are used to make decisions about people's lives, including you know, what schools that children attend or gets interviewed for jobs. Um, so uh, the access uh, is incredible. Uh, this is something really rare to see. Uh, so again, congratulations to uh, these amazing teams behind this project. Thank you, Gianluca. Um, congratulations to the winner. So we will have next, we will uh, invite Mohamed Komani to the stage to announce our fourth winner uh, for tonight.
uh, body count, extra, uh, extrajudicial executions uh, in Bangladesh. It is uh, from uh, Nitra News, uh, Bangladesh, the credit for uh, uh, this story. It is Nazmul, Ahsan, Tasneem, Khalil, Peter, Addus, Soho, uh, Yuli, Martinez, and five unnamed journalists and researchers based in Bangladesh. It is really one of the best stories, uh, data stories that I read last year. Uh, it is a combination between uh, the magic of uh, data and uh, the field support work, uh, which give this story an amazing impact. Uh, what we need to focus, uh, I will not uh, go through uh, the details of uh, the data, the techniques, and uh, the other things, but I will focus on uh, uh, what we need to focus in this story is how uh, the team of this project uh, worked in a dangerous environment for a journalist uh, like uh, Bangladesh, especially in this kind of uh, stories, and how we can, as a journalist and data journalist, can go through this as, uh, as a team to, to do a cross-border collaboration uh, projects uh, to, uh, to, to have an impact and to make uh, to uh, go through the challenges uh, we have uh, to thank uh, the five unnamed journalists and researchers based in bangladesh who uh, they couldn't uh, reveal uh, their names or publish their uh, publish with their names and maybe uh, one day uh, they can let the world know uh, uh, who uh, they were about uh, of, the, of this project Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you, uh, Mohamed. Um, yes, um, so um, we hope that, you know, this, um, the winning of this prize, you know, will, will give more empowerment to our journalists, friends in Bangladesh. You know, they are undergoing a very tough time in the country. Yeah. So next, uh, we have um, Jamile to announce uh, the fifth winner uh, for tonight. Hi, just a comment to first, uh, the Sigma Award ceremony is particularly special to me because in my first time on the jury and I have been involved in finalist projects for this award in the past, so I understand the anticipation and excitement you may be feeling on other side of the screen. <laughs> uh, I pleased uh, to announce the winner, anyway, the wind blows, conducted by the Greece team. Uh, led by journalists Navena Sadasivan and Clayton O'Bern in the USA. Uh, it explains how an uh, industry bypassed the air quality monitoring system, resulting in the emission of a toxic smoke that affected a community and caused serious health consequences. Uh, this investigation is a powerful example of a blended data analysis with a compelling storytelling and visual elements. It's a story uh, that's not only important, but also humanizes the impact of uh, environmental issues on the communities. Congratulations to the team for their outstanding work and uh, bringing the research to light. Thank you. Great. Thank you, uh, Jamila. So the next um, winner <laughs> will yeah. be announced. Yeah. I'm coming well, back up because it's going to be your turn to to announce um, um, a winner and, and uh, to make some people really happy on the other side of the screen, Kang, isn't it? And uh, that's the reason why I am choosing to uh, announce this winner, uh, because yeah. it was the entry uh, that was submitted in Chinese language. And I'm yeah. a Chinese speaker. So, you know, yes, um, I'm going to read um, the Chinese title of the story and followed by English translation, of course. So the winner, the prize um, goes to um, illustration, bracket, China's war drums to the first island chain, responses and the reshaping of the US-Japan strategy amidst Taiwan Strait military tension. In Chinese, the title, the original title, Tu Jie, Jie Fang Jun, Ru He Jing Di, Di Yi Dao Lian, Tai Hai Chong Tu Xia, Qian Dong the Mei Ri Jun Shi Bu Ju. It is published by the reporter, Bao Dao Zhe, from Taiwan. The credits uh, go to 
Shi Kai Su, Eden Gong, Hao Xiang Ko, Yi Hui Chen, Qin Xuan Hong, Zi Lei Yang, Sherry Xue Li, Li, Chen Yun Chang, Shi Yun Chang, Yan Chen Wang, Shu Hua Chen. And I think it makes more sense for me to read that name in Chinese. Um, Shi Si Kai, <coughs> Hong Qing Xuan, Ke Hao Xiang, Jian Yi Hui, Jiang Shi Ming, Ke Hao Xiang, Jian Yi Hui, Hong Qing Xuan, Yang Zi Lei, Li Xue Li, Zhang Zhen Hong, Zhang Shi Yun, Wang Yan Cheng, Chen Shi Hua. Congratulations. And we have uh, um, this project, um, why it wins the award? Because you know it took very dry military data and then turned this data into a very compelling visual narrative to highlight the dangers of a war breaking out at one of the world's key flashpoints, which is the Taiwan Straits. It made the risk of a confrontation clearer to an audience that may not have been focusing on the issues. So again, congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you so much for that, Kang. And so we're going to travel to another side of the planet now, right? All the way to um, Nigeria with Joshua. Hey, welcome back on stage. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Um, this next story is dear to my heart. Um, and it's a great um you know story that you know use data to accentuate first the in-depth research and ground truth in as an elementary toolkit of investigative journalism and also reinforcing the power of historical if you like you know primary data you know that is buried in satellite imagery as a treasure trove for data and investigative journalism uh, and beyond just you know yeah, ground truth in, you know, deploying satellite imagery is also the compelling way that the story was driven on and also the combination of different tools, you know, and, you know, visualization um, uh, techniques to do get the story down and to take a story that, you know, it's take, make a story unique, something that has been a, an age long challenge, you know, humanitarian conflict challenge in Nigeria, in Africa, if you like, and then bringing it forward, uh, uh, you know, to make it look like it was just yesterday. It was really an enterprising piece. And the story, the, the title of the winning story is Ni Finding Nigeria's Forgotten Mass Graves Through Slight Data, uh, published by Umango or Umango Mass Media and Newsline Magazine. Uh, the byline um, was led by Marcel Mohamed. Uh, the satellite imagery analysis and visualization was also done by the same uh, journalist. Uh, the field reporting by Adekule Adibajo and the editing, of course, by the Newsline magazines, Russia Elias. Uh, Kule Adibajo also editing the story and Erin Brown of Newsline magazine. And the story, of course, is from Nigeria. Yay, congratulations to them. Yeah. <laughs> you gave us such a, a drum roll moment there. <laughs> that was cool. All right. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. And congratulations you. to them. All right, I'm back because <laughs> this time uh, Marianne will take the turn to announce the next winner. Go ahead, Marianne. Yay. Yeah, it is me. And with a, with a very great pleasure that I'm here um, to announce um, the eighth project um, winning a, a SIGBA award today. Um, the title of that project is um, LA Homelessness, how LA's scoring system for subsidized housing gives black and Latino people experiencing homelessness lower priority scores. This project was published by the Markup from the United States of America. And um, the credits you see on screen by Colin Letcher and Maddie Varner. Congratulations to them. Um, this investigation, also published by the LA Times, confirmed what some people had long suspected. Um, for years, the scoring system for allocating housing on the basis of vulnerability um, uh, rated unhoused black people as less vulnerable than white people. And as a result, it 
uh, deprioritized their candidacy for permanent housing. In this project, the markup analyzed more than 130,000 um, surveys taken in the LA area as far back as 2016 and found that white people received scores considered high equity or most in need uh, more often than black people and that gap persisted year over year. Uh, this is the story that uses data to expose racial disparities and systematic issues. Um, the Sigma's Price Committee noted that the extensive methodology of this project acts as a guide that other journalists can follow to do similar investigations in their own communities. Uh, the markup did outstanding work in the public interest. Well done to them and congratulations. Thank you, Marianne. So uh, next, uh, we would like to invite uh, Katya to announce our ninth um, winner tonight, today. Hello, everyone. Uh, I don't speak English very well, so sorry, uh, but I will try. Um, today, I'm here in Curitiba, city where I teach at uh, University Positivo, and I love Sigma Finalize uh, because I use uh, these projects in my data journalist class. I love. <laughs> Okay, let's go. Award, award, award winning. So sorry. <laughs> um, um, excuse me if I pronounce a uh, name uh, wrong. Okay. Uh, ghost flag, ghost tags. So sorry, ghost tags inside New York City's black market uh, for temporary sales plates uh, published by Street Blogs, uh, the New Jersey Monitor and motherboard uh, from the USA, um, reporting and writing Jesse Coburn, I, 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 I hope, uh, and Jesse Kuntzman. Oh, um, it's amazing work, uh, which combines uh, data tracking stat strategies uh, and also conventional methods uh, with uh, interviews and source um uh, very well uh present and writing uh, this report is about a very uh, relevant topic people are uh, committing crimes uh, in made in managing to hide using fake results okay <laughs> congratulations <Thank you> <laughs> congratulations indeed thank you so much katya um, so that brings us to our final winner, and we have Roberto Rocha to announce the winner. And Roberto, sorry we uh, miss you out in the introduction, so please go ahead. No, that's all right. That's all right. I got to wave hello, and I'm taking over for Pinar, who unfortunately is having uh, some internet uh, issues. So I'm going to announce the winner uh, on her behalf, and this is the year of the Shahed. Uh, by published in collaboration by Air Wars, Der Spiegel, and Financial Times uh, in the UK and in Germany. And a very impressive roster here, a credit roster, goes to Sanjana Varghese, Nikolai Homan Mortensen, Julia Nueno, Azul de Monte, Joe Dyke, Rowena de Silva, Oliver Imhoff, Alexander Epp, Nicholas Marienhagen. Chris Kurt, Chris Cook, Max Seddon, Anastasia Stogne, and Felicia Schwartz. And this is a story about the increasing digitization, mechanization, and automation of warfare, which is a worrying trend that will likely accelerate in the coming years. Uh, this is a story about affordable but highly effective Iranian drones that are used by Russia and Ukraine. And it's a great example of what investigative and data journalism can do to warn readers about such a trend. The piece combines in-depth data analysis of attack patterns, first-person accounts of their consequences, and plenty of context of both the history uh, of this weapon and the way it's operated. The narrative is weaved with photographic and audio evidence with a simple but effective series of data visualizations, 
scrolly tearing, scrolly telling sequences and well executed 3D renderings of the drones. In short, it's a rich multimedia experience. Congratulations. Congratulations and thank you, Roberto. And I'm hey. going to Marianne, yes. Yeah. Hey, this is it, guys. Um, we've got our 10 winners. Um, well, I've said it many times. So congratulations again to, to everyone together. Um, they represent, uh, you know, the best of data journalism from 2023. Um, congrats to all the people credited um, in these incredible pieces of data journalism. Um, and to all those who've sent their projects in, because um, you've helped us uh, compile the, the best um, data-driven projects of the past year. And that's an invaluable contribution that helps us monitor the evolution of our field each year. Yeah. Uh, you can actually find the list of the, the winning entries on the Sigma's uh, website right now on sigmaawards.org. Uh, and we'll also put the link on, on this uh, YouTube stream description. And if you want to learn um, how these winning entries were made, you can see the full details of the Sigma's 2024 uh, entries, as well as the shortlist and the winners um, on um, um, from 2023 and all the previous years on GitHub, because uh, we do have a Sigma Awards GitHub, um, and I can show them the link to that right now on screen to help you find it. Um, that's it. You have now access to all of the database uh, from all previous um, entries to the Sigmas. That's over 2,600 entries, if I'm right, from over 100 countries areas. Um, you can download it and, um, and let, us, let us know what you, what you do with it. That would be awesome. Every year we get some crazy examples of uh, analysis and, and um, works being done on, on the data uh, from the Sigmas. So that's also uh, very exciting. And so to talk about what's next, um, each winning entry uh, gets a share of the 5,000 US dollar uh, cash prize. Um, and team members credited uh, in the works are invited to take part uh, in panel discussions on, on the issues surrounding their projects uh, at the International Journalism Festival um, in Perugia, Italy, uh, taking place um, next month. Uh, we'll share more details on these uh, sessions with you soon. So uh, stay tuned on, on the Sigma Awards website. Um, until then, well, thanks everyone. Thanks, Kang. Thanks everyone who who took part today, I'm going to bring everyone back on stage just like we would do in a real life, you know, physical ceremony. <laughs> uh, just to say thanks for uh, coming today, for making this um, a special moment for everyone. Um, you've just made 10 teams very, very happy today. Um, and uh, it's, it's been lovely uh, talking to you all. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Congratulations for everything. Have a lovely day. Well Thank you. Bye-bye. Well done to everyone. Uh, feel free to comment um, in, in the comment section on YouTube. We'll be happy to exchange with you guys. And, um, you know, until next time, uh, take care. Have a good time. Bye. Bye-bye.